Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I go through three completely legal ways where you can beat remote ID. You don't even have to give it a second thought. Let's get to it. In this video, I'm going to talk about remote ID and how RC pilots, whether they're fixed wing or drones, can completely comply with the remote ID rules without giving it a second thought. You don't have to buy anything, you don't have to purchase anything, just go fly your models, much like we've been doing for the past 40 or 50 years. All completely legal. So let's go a little recap or a reminder of what is remote ID. This video is being filmed in February of 2023. A remote ID is a requirement set out by Congress to the FAA to come up with a way where uh, the FAA can track certain information on what they call uh, small unmanned air vehicles, either RC models or drones. It'll either be manufactured into the model, into the electronics, or it'll be a module you can put onto other aircraft. And what it will do will provide certain information on the aircraft's location, um, altitude, speed, and its uh, takeoff point. So if they want to find out where the model took off for any sort of enforcement action, it can do that through a remote ID. So this went into law back in 2019. Uh, the FAA did a, a two-year period of writing the regulation for it. They got about 53,000 comments on it. I wrote in some comments. There were a lot of changes on the remote ID, the original proposed rule to what we have today. For example, in the initial stages of the remote ID, the FAA wanted everybody to plug in via the internet to the central database to track all the flying. It was pointed out that a lot of drone and RC model operations operate in remote areas. There is no way to get to the internet, so that transition to a broadcast capability, things like that happened with the final rule in place. It's important to understand the remote ID. Again, this is being videoed in February of 2023. There is nothing any pilot has to do with the remote ID until September 16th of 2023. Again, no pilot has to comply with anything until September 16th, 2023. The rule is in place. What's happening right now is a lot of background information, um, both the FAA is working with manufacturers. Manufacturers are supposed to be compliant as of December 16th last year, 2022, that anything they make is compliant with the remote ID. There are a large number of manufacturers that are compliant. Uh, you can see this on the FAA website. But again, it's all in the background. There's nothing we need to do as pilots until in September 16th, 2023, that's when the remote ID kicks in and you have to have a remote ID to fly in the national airspace system with the exception of the following um, uh, three cases that we'll talk about now. The first situation where you do not need to give remote ID a second thought, you need to do nothing. You fly exactly as you have been your entire RC drone life up to now is to fly in a FRIA, a FRIA being an FAA recognized identification area. The FRIA concept came out of discussions with industry groups and the FAA to set aside certain airspace where model flying could be done without the need for remote ID. Again, if you fly in a FRIA airspace, your model does not need to have any electronics or anything with remote ID. You simply fly in that FRIA airspace and you are compliant with a remote ID ruling per the FAA. Now, there are no FRIAs in existence right now. This concept came out last year. Uh, the FAA is working with various groups, particularly the Academy of Model Aeronautics, to implement the FRIA concept. The way it's going to work is the FAA has determined that the FAA wants to work with what they call community-based organizations. These community-based organizations have a history of um, working with the community. They have internal safety regulations, and they're kind of a trusted partner to speak for the RC groups that they'll be flying with. The very first group to get the community-based organization is the Academy of Model Aeronautics. They got that back in November of 2022. Uh, Flight Test has since gotten a community-based organization, and there should be a lot more. My guess is primarily educational institutions, schools, colleges, uh, research institutes, things of that nature. The FAA is still working out procedures, primarily with the AMA, to figure out how to do um, the FRIAs. The way it's going to work is 
the individual does not apply to the FAA for free application for your club or whatever, what's going to happen is the FAA is going to work with a community-based organization, in this case the AMA. So the AMA has information out to their club officers. There are a little under 2,500 AMA clubs in the United States. They need to gather information, the geographical location of the FRIA, what types of models that they've flown, how long the club's been around, also have seen controlled or uncontrolled airspace. These are pretty easy things to do for the club officers. This will be put together, and then the AMA will provide that information in some format that's still being developed, such that the um, FAA will say, Club Georgia Mountain Flyers, whatever, you are a recognized FRIA, FAA recognized identification area under the certain boundaries, altitudes, geographic locations. And that means once you have the FRIA, you just go and fly at that club site at any time without any special electronics and you are remote ID compliant because you're in the FRIA. Now there's been a lot of discussion um, on YouTube videos and, and other websites that the FAA in no way will be able to come up to be able to um, approve free as uh, soon enough to meet all the demand for the educational institutions, all the AMA clubs, the 2,500 AMA clubs, and other organizations that may pop up. Personally, I agree with that. I don't see any way in the world the FAA is going to be able to move this fast on something this new to get everything um, uh, in order for the FRIAs. My view on this, and we won't know until we get much closer to September 16th, if it looks like you will have a club and it will not be free or compliant for whatever bureaucratic reason, and it's coming up on September 15th, 15th 2023, 20, and you need to be compliant the next day, the FAA is simply going to extend that compliance date. Uh, this is a common thing to do whenever there's some big project going on with the government, even industry. And two examples where this has already happened. With the compliance that I mentioned earlier, where manufacturers have to produce remote ID compliant architectures models by a certain date. The original date was September 16th, 2022. The manufacturers just didn't, were not able to do that. And the FAA simply slipped it to December 16th. Even with December 16th, there's language, if you study carefully, the FAA didn't set another date, slip it. They just said, we're not going to be doing any enforcement actions for manufacturers that can't meet this. Another very good case of um, a huge project that just didn't meet its deadlines, had to be slipped, is the Real ID program. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Real ID, it's a congressional action that actually came out of the 9-11 attacks. And what it is, is a way to standardize the security of the driver's licenses issued by the 50 states uh, with certain technical security specifications. You can tell if you have a real ID compliant license, there's a, there's a star somewhere on the license that varies by state. You can easily Google to see what it is. That kept running into delays, COVID hit. It was going to be in May of 2023. They have since, the government has since slipped that to May of 2025 to be real ID compliant. So the fact that the FRIAs, the FAA uh, recognized identification areas may not all be complete by September 16th, 2023. I'm just certain that the FAA will grant an exception because the alternative would be just to shut down flying at that site. And I really don't see that happening. So again, FRIAs are the no-brainer, easy way to be remote ID compliant when you fly at a AMA club or any other community-based organization that has the FAA FRIA permissions granted. The second way to comply with the remote ID rule without having to do anything is simply fly a model that's under 250 grams. 250 grams is about 8.8 .8 ounces. An example of this is my Guilo's conversion on the Aronka here. This weighs three ounces. Um, the link for how to do that is in the description. And when you're under 250 grams or the 8.8 .8 ounces, you do not need a remote ID. It doesn't, it doesn't need to exist anywhere. The reason for this is the remote ID is tied to um, your registration. Aircraft like this that are under 250 grams do not need to be registered as small unmanned aircraft systems. Unregistered aircraft do not need the remote ID because the remote ID is tied to your FAA registration. 
So I can envision a lot of drones and other RC aircraft that if, if they're under 8.8 .8 ounces, because of their light weight, you do not need to register them. You, you do not need any form of remote ID at all, any time. The idea behind this is the the reason they want to keep track of aircraft that's stranded in controlled airspace is there could be a danger hitting full-scale aircraft. And these models under eight, point, under 8 ounces or so are so small that they're just not deemed a danger to aircraft and they're just exempted. They do not need to be um, remote ID compliant. So again, flying lightweight models under um, uh, 8 ounces, 250 grams, you do not need to be remote ID compliant. A third way to fly your RC models or drones and not have to worry at all about any remote ID uh, permissions is to simply fly indoors. Um, there, the, the requirement for remote ID is you need remote ID to operate in the national airspace system. That's a very broad term for all the airspace that's controlled by the FAA. Remember, the FAA has tremendous authority in the national airspace system, basically anything from 60,000 feet down to the surface. They can designate a controlled, uncontrolled, weather requirements, there's a whole bunch of stuff to include the military falls under the FAA. When you're inside a gym or field house or some indoor flying facility, that flying facility is not part of the national airspace system, and you do not need to comply with the remote ID when you fly indoors. Um, I lived in the Chicago area for nine years with the wind and the cold winters. We did a great deal of flying indoors. They were in golf dorms, uh, golf domes, field houses, and so forth. It was a lot of fun flying. It was typically smaller models, but there could be some larger models. But again, anything that's flown RC indoors, you do not need to be concerned about remote ID. One other thing to keep in mind as you follow the um, path and the implementation of remote ID is there's still a lot of questions that industry is asking, models are asking, and the FAA may not have any ready answers for you. And these will come with time as industry groups to include the AMA, um, live with remote ID, see what's right, see what's wrong, see what can be improved. For example, there is a lot of talk about FRIAs because that is going to be a pretty big thing for the clubs. And people are asking, well, can individuals apply for a FRIA like in their backyard, make their backyard a FRIA, FAA recognized identification area? Right now, the answer is no. I don't know. That may change over time. But what does appear to have what the FAA is calling a pathway to um, success or implementation is having temporary FRIAs for things like a, a model airplane show at a certain location, or perhaps you have some drone racing in some location, the FAA does understand that these things happen, they're one-off events, and there is all the reason in the world why they should have a temporary free or for events like that. I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think that will probably happen. We just have to wait a little bit to see how that works out because the most immediate objective is getting the FRIAs in place for the AMA clubs and flight test and other educational institutions. Another interesting example of remote ID and model aircraft concerns free flight and control line models. I don't think the FAA gave this a lot of thought because there was so much going on with the drones. The drones are really the driver behind a, a lot of this, but the AMA uh, their position is that free flight models and control line models do not need to have remote ID due to the nature of their flying. The control line, you know exactly where the pilot is, and free flight are just short events with not especially large models. That may change, but right now that is the interpretation that no remote ID is needed for free flight or control line models. So thank you for tuning into this video. Um, as I mentioned at the very beginning, with remote ID, it'll become the law of the land on September 16th, 2023, unless it's extended. Um, there's a good chance it may be extended if there's delays with the implementation of the FAA recognized identification areas. And until then, this is being filmed in February of 2023, there is nothing anybody needs to do to be concerned about or comply with or even think about remote ID. It's all working with the manufacturers right now and what they're going to do. We need to be concerned with the implementation date. And again, 
three ways to avoid it flying in an FAA recognized identification area which would be your club sooner than later AMA club you can um, fly bottles that weigh under eight um, ounces or 250 grams they do not need remote ID and you can fly indoors so thank you for tuning in there's a lot more to follow with remote ID as we get closer to September 16th 2023 and I'll work to keep you up to date on these very important issues <laughs>